Hi, I'm James Schilling Law for Insider Travel Report, and I'm here today with Steve Odell, who's the chief, the brand new chief sales officer for Regent Seven Seas Cruises, and he's literally moving from uh, Sydney to Miami as we speak. We're, we're talking to him in Sydney, and the next time I see him, I guess will be Miami, um, and we're going to talk to him about his new role uh, and and also what the future holds for Regent Seven Seas. And you'll find out that and a whole lot more here on Insider Travel Report. Now, first of all, Steve, how are you? Uh, how, how is life down there in Sydney as you're trying to get out of there, right? I'm trying to get out of here. Yes, it's um, life's good. I mean, Sydney's a beautiful place to live. Um, and I've been traveling quite a lot um, between Miami and Sydney uh, as I settle into this new job. So I'm here for a few more weeks and then I'm relocating to Miami in April. Okay. So uh, okay. home is focus at the moment to try and work out what we bring and what we don't. That That's always a tough, especially on that distance. So so the, the fact is that you actually were at Region 7 Seas before. You took a little time off and now you're returning as chief sales officer in Miami. But talk a little bit about your background um, actually, with all the brands, uh, you know, uh, that that uh, for, for I should actually for Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings, right? Uh, sure, so, yeah. yeah. So, well, I um, talk about that and, and how, how coming back to the company is very exciting. Uh, well, I, I was um, hired by a Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings uh, in 2015. Um, at that time, I was working in Europe uh, for another luxury brand, Silver Sea, and I've been there for a number of years and um, we were ready to come back home. And um, as luck would have it, uh, Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings were looking to open an office here in in Asia Pacific. And uh, I met with uh, Harry Summer, who's now CEO and Bob Binder, who was uh, the deputy chair. And um, they, could, they hired me to do the startup for Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings in Australia and in, in Asia more broadly. And so I, I was employee number one, um, you know, had to find premises, had to exit us from GSA uh, r- arrangements for all three brands. So I managed Tri-Brand for about five years. Wow. Then, uh, yeah, and the business really took off, um, pleased to say, you know, we ended up with about 200 employees by the time I stepped out. Um, and it and a, and a huge business had been developed um, under my under my umbrella, um, and I so I think it was a big advantage to have uh, oversight of three brands because you learn a lot about the company. Uh, but you know I think my uh, you know my expertise is luxury, and I slowly gravitated to two brands, Oceana and Regent, and then sure. finally I've arrived at Regent. You know, with three brands, it's a lot to know and a lot to talk about. But, you know, my specialism is luxury. And um, so I'm really delighted to be back here doing that. Now, as chief sales officer, what what are, what are you going to really focus on, uh, you know, you, for, to really optimize all the global sales distribution channels and, and really develop a great relationship with our readers who are travel advisors, your travel partners? Yeah. So talk a little bit about what your goal is as chief sales officer. Well, one of the one of the things that I've learned very quickly since I arrived is that you know we have a very sharp group of people in our sales group and with longevity and uh, a lot of respect and you know this is a people business and uh, relationships are key to how successful you can be. Um, so you know my job is you know how do we how do we grow how do we uh, do things better how do we differentiate ourselves from. Uh, everyone else in the marketplace mm-hmm. um, and how do we arm our team with the tools to really help the trade so that's the big focus um, I think also you know having a global knowledge uh, has been an advantage as well because you know we are an international company with international offices and actually sharing best practice between those offices is also um, I think a big advantage in this new job you know to have someone, at Andrea's table as president, who has a has an international uh, experience, I think is very beneficial because you know the the business operates differently in different places, but we can all learn from one another. Um, no, absolutely, and it it really is. And you got a great team. Uh, you know, I I know Sean uh, quite well. 
uh, he's been there forever. He's well known in the trades. And so, and now you're coming in and, and uh, you know, you mm -hmm. really have all this international experience. Plus, as you said, the all three brands. So, and, and actually you started before you even, I guess you said to me earlier that uh, you kind of were hired at the christening for uh, Seven Seas Grandeur, which is actually behind me. You can see the, the pool deck, but uh, you got a chance to really get a, a real taste of, of the brand new Seven Seas Grandeur. I was actually on that christening, that, that uh, christening cruise as well. Uh, we didn't get a chance to meet, but t tell us from, from your perspective and what you heard from the, the trade partners, how did they respond to the new ship? Well, I think it's nothing positive. I mean, it's an impressive vessel. I mean, you know, if I look back, uh, I was involved in the uh, the launch of the Explorer and the Splendor, the sister ships. Right. And I think the word that was used back with the Explorer in the very beginning was that it was a game changer in the luxury space. Right. You know, architecturally beautiful, great design, you know, and that combined with the incredible levels of service that we offer, um, you know, is a perfect uh, combination. And each one of those ships has, has you know, uh, surpassed the one before because obviously when you build three, you learn uh, what you're missing, what you, um, you know, you can perhaps enhance. Mm. And so the the third ship, the Grandeur, really I think is such a masterpiece. Um, it's beautiful to the eye. It's It's got, uh, if it's got a residential feel, uh, you know, with all the art on board, um, that we've invested in, um, you know, it really feels like a home, um, you know, bespoke furniture pieces, really comfortable suites. Um, you know, when you come there, you're really, it's really like coming into someone's home and uh, with all the service laid on top. And, uh, and I think the other thing is we've refined the dining uh, choices as well with new menu items, new restaurant choices. So, you know, it's it's really the epitome of luxury in in the cruise industry. Well, obviously, I was I, I was on with you for that first uh, uh, sailing in December. You got a chance to go a little, uh, a couple more, I believe, um, but to experience all the food, I would I would have liked to do that actually. But uh, and then, but the trade the travel advisors that I met all oh, were very impressed by it. They they loved the previous ships, but you kind of pulled it all together, and this is kind of the. The, the 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 end result of of everything you've learned in the last two ships right it is absolutely and you know it's but you know it's the soft touch stuff as well i mean you can have beautiful architecture and you can have the next best restaurant but actually it's about how you deliver service and how you refine service you know i mean you you look at examples of it you can go to uh go to some ships now and use a qr code to scan a drink but you know, this is a place where the barman remembers what you drink. And when you walk into the bar, mm -hmm. your drink is being prepared. You know, it's that <laughs> kind of service. And the training that our hotel ops guys have really instilled in the in the whole staff on board is is really excellent. And that's what people really appreciate. Well, the, 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 the Compass Rose is just a incredible, we're talking about restaurants, your main yeah. restaurant, the, the really the, is the showpiece. And it is a showpiece in this ship. It's it's it just yeah. lights up. We, we I've interviewed your your head of culinary and all that, the chefs on board, mm -hmm. and it was an mm -hmm. amazing. We that's where we had the opening christening dinner. But I would yeah. love to go back there another time to really experience the it, you know for all, the entire menu. Um, but yeah, that I mean that menu is a perfect example. I, I I don't think you'll find a menu like that on any ship anywhere. You know, I mean, virtually any anything you can dream of wanting to eat, you probably find in that menu. And I I think sometimes we. We don't talk about that enough because mm -hmm. we we talk about speciality dining. You know, I mean, everybody uh, everybody likes to try the Asian cuisine or the uh, the um, the Italian cuisine or go to the steakhouse. But I mean, our our main Compass Rose restaurant, I think, has the best menu at sea. And uh, you know, when you look at the choices there, I mean, you can just about eat, eat anything. So. Yeah. Now, it really, it is amazing. You talked about like Pacific Rim with the Asian specialty, which actually mm -hmm. the entrance there is, you always have a showpiece entrance, but the cherry yeah. tree at the entrance of Very that lovely. particular restaurant is really over the top. It really is amazing. I mean, and then you yeah. go to your, your steakhouse and, um, you know, and, and, and then the Italian restaurant as well, which are just incredible and right next to each other. So you're, you're not going to go hungry on this ship at all. <laughs> And the, di the design guys have done a terrific job. I mean, you know, the, the theme was sort of Art Deco, uh, 30s New York and Paris, 
And when you, you know, when you go to those restaurants and see the beautiful designs and the Chanel influenced designs, right. uh, they've done an outstanding job at making it feel very special. Yeah. So you, you, you got a chance to try to sample, to do sample that. Now I want to change the subject a little bit. You, you recently announced a collection of sort of six immersive overnights voyages. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about those cruises and why they are a little different from what you currently offer? Yeah, well, this is a little bit about differentiating and, uh, you know, thinking laterally rather than doing what we always did. Um, you know, if I think in typically building itineraries, um, the luxury cruise lines have, uh, you know, sort of given a collection of ports and tried to offer as many things as um, as uh, possible in, in a 10-day or a 12-day voyage or shorter. Um, and so it's sort of been pretty port-intensive itineraries up to now. But when, you know, we're trying to target outside of the cruise bubble, we're trying to find people to uh, travel with us who perhaps maybe go on land. You know, they might go to three nights to Paris, three nights to Rome, uh, you know, and travel around on land rather than come to cruise. So what we're trying to do is get out of the box a bit and target those kind of customers. So this is a trial. We've created six itineraries uh, with less ports, but every port has an overnight stay, sometimes two overnights. And the concept here is to, to give people more immersion into their destination. Um, you know, I, I, I'll use the Japan cruise, sorry, the Asia cruise is a good mm -hmm. example. It's sort of particularly close to my heart. But here on this cruise in, in, uh, in Asia, you have two nights Tokyo, two nights Seoul, two nights Shanghai, um, and you're you're really getting a chance then to you don't have to get narrowed down to you know one or two excursions. You could do four excursions on on a on on a on two days in a port. But we're also getting into overnight uh, excursions where people can go to the top restaurants. Um, you know, touring the city by night to see the lights rather than seeing it in the day. You know, we're really giving people a total immersion into the culture. And um, we've got six of them. There are five of them are in Europe and then this one in Asia. And uh, all of them have got that um, design of content. So you don't you see four ports maybe in uh, 10 days, but you really see them in depth. And, um, you know, it, we're, we're track, it's a little early to track, um, you know, numbers because it's been out for around two weeks. But, you know, the, the, you can see the attention pick up, um, particularly, you know, we, we measure everything that's, that's sure. um, out there. And um, the bookings are starting to, to come now for those voyages in a very positive trend. So it's, there are three this year and three next year. And then, um, you know, we, if we can really prove them to be successful, we'll definitely be doing more of them. But it's sort of turning tradition on its head a bit, and you know, if you're if you're leading the market, you've you've got to be innovative, and you've got to you know you've got to be ahead of everybody else. No, absolutely, and of course, the trend over the past few years has been more time in port, more overnights, things like that. So you've taken this to another yeah. level. Uh, so yeah. that that yeah. that makes a lot of sense, and I know that's what people want. They they want to see these ports. Uh, they they have great dining on board. They have great. They're comfortable. It's, it's on, incredible suites and incredible spa and everything else. But when they get off the the ship, they want to experience the destination. That's right, and I think you know it sort of comes back to this value for money uh, proposition of of cruise as well because. Uh, you know, if you, I, I use my own story already once in an interview, but I'll, 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 you know, I'll use it here because I think it's a very good demonstration. I had a year off, and we had a bucket list, um, and we did some cruises and we did some land, um, um, land stays, luxury hotels, hiking, that kind of stuff. Um, my credit card when I was on board uh, ships was flat. I didn't spend any money. You know, you. You, you have everything's a, included, right? Everything's, everything's included. You could literally put your um, credit card away and not use it. Uh, as soon as you step on land, you're paying for everything because largely luxury hotels only um, have a room rate and, uh, you know, everything else you do once you arrive in the hotel True. is uh, paid for. You know, your uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, um, you, you have to pay transfers to get to the hotel. You have to fly between destinations. So my credit card was spiking like hell when we were <laughs> Paris and Rome and Athens and London, but on the ship, it was perfectly flat. So I think that's a good demonstration of the value. Sometimes we, you know, I mean, we know that that's the main selling point of luxury cruises, but, um, you know, it's actually a very, um, 
with these immersive itineraries, I think you'll 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 see how well they stack up uh, from a value point of view. Well, and, and often, at least with I know Region Seven Seas, you also have included uh, shore excursions and included events yeah. and things like that, where you don't have to spend either when you're off when you're off the ship. And you know what we really loved when we went to cruises that you know we when you're traveling day after day after day, you get a very big laundry bag, and as <laughs> soon as you arrive on board, you have everything clean in 24 hours. So. Uh, you know, that's that it's a small thing, but, you know, for, for people who are traveling for a long time, that's actually, you know, a fantastic benefit. But but everything, you know, Wi-Fi, I mean, uh, you say excursions. I mean, you can choose you can choose unlimited excursions. You don't pay for uh, to go to speciality restaurants. Um, all of those things are included. And that's why it's such a good value um, proposition. No, absolutely. And that's how I do my laundry, actually. I just keep on going cruise ships. I mean, why, why should I do it on my own, right? It's much, much better that way, right? You just have to yeah, keep it's, it's, ships, it's a right? weird story, but I mean, it's reality. When you when you do go traveling for months and months, you really you really need that. Well, I'm, I'm about ready to embark on about a two-month series of trips, and I need, I'm need i going to have to find laundry somewhere on the way. But when I'm on yeah. land, it's going to be a problem, let me tell you. That's something like that. Uh, let, let's talk about uh, one thing that you are going to be overseeing. Uh, big, you know, you've been... Uh, Region has done an amazing job with its travel partner program, Region Elevate. Uh, talk yeah. a little bit about what that offers uh, for maybe some of the advisors who may not be familiar, and how can it help advisors sell yeah. more Region 7 Cs, uh, and what are the components of the program? Well, the, again, this is sort of um, taking our agent relationships to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, we and I think, you know, when you look at this program, we're really sharing much more than anybody else about how to do business. Mm -hmm. So Elevate is um, a piece of work that's in our travel agent center, and it's available to any agent that works with us. And uh, it's, it's, it's got three components, really, but it's all designed to help um, uh, our partners develop their business in a, in a constructive and logical way. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we do is talk about insights. So we talk about who the customer is. You know, we've done a lot of um, profiling work uh, over the past um, 18 months, a bit, actually a bit before that. Um, and, you know, in, and we, we understand, we understood who our customer was, but now we understand in a more granular way who the customer is. And um, so within this uh, insights, we identify uh, four types of travelers that can be a target for um, uh, an agent trying to develop first-time region um, customer. And we talk about their likes, their dislikes, where to find them. Uh, so there's a very uh, granular look at the kind of customers that they should be targeting. And then the second part of it is how we support um, targeting those customers. The kind of tools, so it's a basically a set of tools and advice on how to reach the customers, you know, based on the kind of work we do ourselves um, internally uh, in, within our own marketing. So, you know, it could be, for example, if you're going to do email, uh, if you're going to uh, nurture a lead through emails, you know, how many emails do you drop? When do you drop them? What should the content be on each one? So how do you make a lead, a perfected lead that can drive a sale? So there's there's a whole section in in the um, in that part of the Elevate program where we really guide travel agents to um, you know getting the conversion of the customer the mm -hmm. first time customer um, and then the the third part is really tools to help uh, make all that come together so it's promotions it's incentives you know we we uh, we really believe in incentivizing the consultant at the front end. Um, you know, the, 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 obviously the organizations get compensated for their performance, but we're very much about trying to um, motivate and, and incentivize the, the uh, agent who's selling to the customer. So we, have, we run a lot of trade incentives tied to our promotions. Um, so, you know, I can give you a lot of examples, but, you know, essentially we try to do that around key selling periods like Wave, for example. Sure. Um, so, so there's something in it for the agent and not only their, their company. And um, that, that is proving to be very successful as well. So Elevate's available uh, to any um, agent to look at. It's in the Travel Agent Center. And, you know, we really encourage people to have a look at it because 
there's more in there than you'll find anywhere else in, in the luxury cruise sector. Well, I know, and I've been listening to some of your team talking about it. I've been very impressed about what you offer. And and I was like, wow, they do that too. You know, this is, it, you really have it all together there. And I think you can find it yeah. all on the website and and you just go aboard. We're talking about whether travel advisor specials, you know, you can find a landing yeah. page for all of that. Uh, yeah, so it's, I, it's easy, to, easy to use. And, um, you know, but you need to dedicate time to it. And, and I know everybody, everyone is busy, um, you know, busy selling because selling tickets is the most important thing we all do. But absolutely. I think it's worth, uh, you know, taking time out to have a look at it to see how you can benefit from it. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I think the other, the ultimate uh, investment you can make as a, as a, an, as a, a travel advisor is to experience product. And so we also now have um, uh, early confirmed space uh, travel agent rates that, um, you know, they're, they're paid for rates, but we, com- we confirm early, allowing, allowing our partners to ex- experience the product. And I mean, honestly, I think that's the best investment you can make going to experience it yourself sure. because, you, you know, you get there, you touch and feel everything, um, and then you really can explain to a client in depth uh, what the experience is about. So, um, yeah, I really encourage that. And those, those rates are available uh, to any travel advisor as well. No, that's a great program. Now, uh, let's turn, turn to another topic. Uh, you recently announced a new partnership with Aston Martin. And I, I did a double take. All I could think of is James Bond and all that. But no, it's no. actually the Formula One, the, the yeah. Aston Martin Aramco Formula One team. Uh, how will this help uh, promote Region 7 Cs and how will the partnership work? Well, you know, we sit, we're, we're in a world of luxury and uh, we, and, and, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, we are all trying to find new customers and partnerships are a great way to do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, this, uh, we've already, we've already invested in a couple of other big partnerships globally. One of them was, is with GHA, the hotel uh, group. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and also we have a, a partnership with Fabergé, of course, through uh, the, uh, Granger's uh, masterpiece, the egg in 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 the ship. Okay, uh, yeah, so we well, that, yeah. Well, that was a big at the the last ship was that was huge. Yeah. Even the yeah. your, your godmother was Fabergé, so that was Sarah Fabergé. That's right. So these, you know, these partnerships um, really are aimed to create uh, global awareness and to you know to attract new to cruise uh, customers. And mm-hmm. so the uh, the uh, Aston Martin Formula One partnership is all about that. You know, it's putting us in a high profile situation with one of the leading, um, you know, teams and, you know, obviously a very elite uh, brand in Aston Martin. Um, You know, those F1 events uh, all around the globe draw probably the richest people uh, on the planet. And um, so we, we, we will, we want to be in the right company in the right places. So if you think about Monaco Grand Prix or Singapore Grand Prix, and now there are four Grand Prix in the US, yeah. those are um, a, you know, a magnet for wealth and um, uh, corporate partnerships that you know, we would also want to be uh, aligned to, um, to properly position our, our brand. So it's got lim- limitless opportunities, to be honest with you. I think there's so much that you, you know, we really have to get focused on what we think we can get the best uh, result from but it's a very prestigious partnership and um we're, we're really proud to be associ- associated with them it only launched last friday a week today yeah no and plus, um, plus you get your logo on the car i think that's pretty cool we got our logo on the car yeah <laughs> we did and then really I, but, you know you three. mentioned this uh, how how do you think specifically the travel advisor community can benefit from this you said it's a whole new affluent audience more mm. selling opportunities, things like that, right? And and also, I think you're fe- featuring some voyages that will be focused on Formula One, right? Yeah, the spotlight. Oh, yeah, there are spotlight voyages that we're going to um, to promote. Um, but you know, I think it's more about creating awareness for the brand, which will drive demand. You know, that it's it's a very you know, I mean, holistically, it's it's a huge opportunity to create awareness for the brand. Mm-hmm. And then within it, there'll be some very specific things. Like we've been running a sweeps take, for example, uh, at the launch um, with uh, travel advisor incentives. Um, and then, of course, you know, we'll have the events them- themselves, excuse me, where um, we'll be able to host uh, partners um, around the globe. Um, so it's got, you know, it's got limitless opportunities. It's about building brand awareness um, luxury positioning. I mean, it ticks all the boxes to be honest with you. 
Um, and, it, and we're only at the very beginning. Uh, so we're all very excited about it. And, uh, you know, we're going to take the best things we can out of it to raise awareness of the brand. No, absolutely. And I think there's even a contest where you can, if you make a booking, you're entered to win and register to win yeah. uh, uh, an Aston Martin race experience. I don't think this means you get to drive the car, but it, it's it's still pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's still pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, getting up close and personal, I mean, our, uh, our CMO was um, in, in at Silverstone last week doing the launch and uh, came back super excited. And, you know, I mean, the, the enthusiasm, you could feel I'm sitting in Zoom meetings at the moment, mostly talking to my colleagues in Miami, but you could feel the enthusiasm uh, across the airwaves. Everybody's super excited about yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's a fun partnership. And, of course, Formula One really has exploded. Uh, you know, back yeah. when I was growing up, it wasn't that big in the U.S., uh, I lived a little in Europe, so I, I knew about it. But boy, in yeah. the last few years, especially with the Netflix show and everything else that's going on, it's become uh, yeah. almost, you know, everyone knows about it. You know, and when when yeah. uh, Hamilton just moved to Ferrari, it, it, it was huge news. That I might, you know, yeah. my, my son's calling me, everyone's calling it. Can you believe yeah. that? You know, so it's it's really visible now. It's very visible. I mean, and this side of the world, I mean, uh, you know, we have Shanghai now, we have uh we have the Malaysian Grand Prix. We have Melbourne. Um, so, you know, the awareness over it, it's a, got a global reach, which I think is really, really important. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I lived in Monaco uh, for um, a few years when I was working in my last job. And, uh, you know, we, we lived in the heart of that in May every year for a week. Of course. No, it was uh, electric. It was on fire with luxury, you know, cars, yachts. You know, it certainly draws the crowd. Um, you know, most most Monaco residents actually go away for a week when that's yeah, all happening. I, I can it's understand chaotic. that. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's happening it's here. It, really it's noisy and chaotic, but yeah, um, it, it's ha it's happening here with Vegas and Miami, and where you're yeah. you're going to be. It's it's just it, it becomes all happening, and I think a lot of people yeah. were worried about the Vegas thing, but it turned out to be a great race, and yeah. uh, people really enjoyed it. I you, you know it's it's amazing, and yeah. then of course Vegas just had Super Bowl, so boy, they're getting at everything. You know, <laughs> they're getting it all. Yeah, it's hard living in the middle of it. We did it one year, and then the. the the other years we just got out of town because you can't you can't go anywhere. The you know the roads are the racetrack, and uh, but it's exciting. I mean, you know that just seeing the wealth that arrives with an event like that is Absolutely. staggering. It is yeah. pretty amazing. Now we're going to talk. Look, talk a little bit about uh, how's how's Wave Steven going for you, you guys. Uh, you got a lot of different offers there. There, I think you have a. Yeah. We talked earlier about you have a special uh, landing page for all your specials, but things are going well, yeah. right? Things have gone very well. We had a we had a great January. You know, we um we exceeded our targets for January. February's off to a great start. We we took the January uh, promotion proposition, which was a two category upgrade and a shipboard, um, and um uh, sorry, and incentives. Um, and um we elevated that in February with a Valentine's Day offer for the first two weeks, and now we've got some other promotions running for the back half of the month. So in, as well as what we did in January, we are uh, just pushing up the notch a bit to keep the pace going. Sure. But we're, we're very happy um, with the results for January and February so far. It's been a great wave. And talking to our partners around, I, it seems to be uh, a similar story for just about everybody. Uh, you know, there's a burst in, in uh, the enthusiasm to travel and uh, we're all making great gains um, from this, this wave season for sure. And you have mm. some super ships to to sell, including the latest Seven Seas Grandeur, uh, which I I thought was an amazing vessel. Now, uh, is there anything else you want to tell our hundred and twenty six thousand travel advisors about Regent Seven Seas today? And and is there anything else you want to tell them about what you hope to do as a chief sales officer? Sure. Well, I you know again, I think uh, the task for everybody is to educate yourselves, make sure you know brands really well take advantage of all the tools on the table, uh, look at the individual incentives as well, because those are really an attractive way in which to, um, you know, to reward yourself. Um, I, I say think out of the box because we tend to really fish in the, in the cruise bubble. We tend to focus on that because we know that's where regular cruises are. Right. But I would really encourage uh, travel advisors to, Kind of get out of that and look at uh, hotel uh, travelers, look at skiers, look at villa villa renters, uh, look at safari customers, 
because um, I think when you look at what's happening for first time customers, it's, it's, you know, it's a big chunk of what we carry in a year. And um, there's a big opportunity outside of the cruise bubble. You know, don't get stuck in the cruise bubble right. is my, is my, um, you know, my, my advice and invest in yourselves, you know, get, get on board, go and feel it so you can talk about it because personal endorsement is, is key really. I mean, if you know a product and you can recommend it from your own experience, um, that's a big, uh, a big strength to the customer wanting to uh, step out and enjoy a cruise for the first time. No, absolutely. And that's definitely the way to do it. Now, where can travel advisors go to kind of get more information about Region 7 Seas and all the programs you offer to travel advisors? Well, I mean, the best source of information is uh, the website, of course, in the Travel Agent Center. Um, you know, just, you know, um, trawl around the, the website and have a look at what's there. There's a lot of helpful um, uh, information. And of course, we have a, a, a big uh, sales team um, and uh, they're, at, they're, they're at your disposal. You can make contact with the sales team through that uh, travel agent contact, uh, center as well. Um, you know, we have people all around the country who are experts that can share their knowledge, uh, can, can work with you individually, um, you know, whether it's an event or whether it's helping you with, uh, you know, EDM marketing or, or whatever, training at the very basic, you know, level of support. We're there to help you with a big team of people. And, um, you know, we're, we're ready, willing, we're hungry. Absolutely. Well, Steve, it's great to meet you uh, virtually. Sorry we didn't get to meet on Seven Seas Grandeur during the christening, but I'm sure now you're coming to Miami, uh, our paths will cross again very soon. Absolutely. And I'm looking Absolutely. forward to talking more with you about uh, Region Seven Seas and about cruising in general. Again, thank you for taking the time. Uh, to speak with us today about all that's going on with Region 7 Seas Cruises. Thank you, James. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to talking again soon. I'm James Schellinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.